Hey guys, this is pre-algebra um, lesson 6-7, solving multi-step inequalities. And this is the last lesson of this topic. So in this topic, we'll solve inequalities that require multiple steps. Let's look at explore it. Charlene has two flash drives of the same size that she uses to store pictures and videos. Each drive is holding the same number of um, gigabytes of data, D, which, uh, which is represented by D. She wants to move everything to a memory card that can hold up to eight gigabytes, okay? So, what's a flash drive? Do you know what a memory card is? If you have a camera, you put the memory card in, if you have a computer, you can um, use flash drive to, to get more storage. Okay? If you run out of storage, then you can use additional storage using these. Okay, So um, she has two flash drives. If you look at this drawing, these two are the flash drives. And uh, they're the same size. Um, each drive holding the same number of gigabyte of data D. So we don't know how many, but they're gonna hold the same gigabyte D. And she wants to move everything to a memory that, uh, card that can hold up to eight gigabytes. So these two, she's gonna, she wants to move everything here. What can we say? So part A, Charlene is going to delete one gigabyte of data from each flash drive. How can the total amount of data left on the two flash drives be represented as an expression? So if both flash drives have one gigabyte deleted, what can you say? For the total um, amount of data left, total amount of data that you're going to, that you're going to move, right? So D represents how much data they have. You're going to subtract D minus one with one, but you have two total flashcards, so you're going to multiply that by two, right? So, which is the same as 2d minus 2, okay? Because you use the distributed property and distribute it out. All right, part B. How can the expression you wrote be used to write an inequality that shows the maximum amount of data? each flash drive can have on it in order to have all the data transferred to the eight gigabyte memory card. So um, you don't know how much D is, but can you write an inequality so that it doesn't go over the eight gigabyte? So yeah, so the maximum would be eight. That means the expression of the total memory that you want to move would have to be less than or equal to eight gigabyte. So you can just simply put this um, expression here, 2d minus d or 2 times d minus 1, okay? All right. Let's look at focus on math practices. If each flash drive has 5 gigabytes of memory, can all the data be transferred to the memory card? Explain. So if each dr uh, flash drive has 5 gigabytes, can all of them go to the a gigabyte memory card. Well, together, the total is 10 gigabyte, right? So does that fit into a gigabyte? No, you still need two more gigabytes. Okay, so let's try that out. Um, no, not, not if uh, all the storage, all the mem, all the uh, flash drive storage are used. But if you, however, delete one gigabyte from each card, 
like in part A, there will be four gigabytes card, which is a total of eight gigabytes. So all of the data oh, will fit on the memory card. Okay. Okay, let's look at the next page. Um, we're gonna th think about how is solving a multi-step um, inequality similar to and different from solving a multi-step equation. Let's look at example one. Write and solve multi-step inequalities. Gabriela likes to make people guess her age. She gives them this clue. Add 13 to the product of three and the sum of my age and two, and you get a number greater than my height in inches. What are possible ages for Gabriela? Grabs the solution. So her height is 55 inches, and this is her clue. Um, you can start with her height in inches. Um, whatever you get, from her clue is gonna be greater than 55, right? So you can multiply um, the three, but you can, wait, you add 13 to the product of three and the sum of my age and two. So sum of your age and two, her age X and two is first. And then product of three and X plus two is gonna be the product, okay? And then you add 13. So X plus two is in a parentheses. And then you multiply by three and then you add 13, okay? So this is a multi-step inequality, but if you do it one by one with the order of operation, it's gonna be fine. Um, so solving the inequality, what do you do first? Do you divide by three or do you subtract 13 first? If you divide by three, that's more complicated because if you divide by three, you need to divide with the with with the with all the terms, right? So it's better to subtract 13 first so that you have 3x plus 19. Wait. Um, wait, before you do that, you can use the distributed property or you can, you, uh, you can subtract first and you get um, 36. Okay, so if you do subtraction first and then use the distributed property, that's also fine. It's not gonna hurt your answer, okay? And then if you use the distributed property, it's 3x plus 19 and then and then you get here, okay? And then you sub, uh, and then you subtract 19 on both sides again, and then you get 3x is greater than, wait, it's not 36. If you subtract 13 here, you're gonna get 42, I'm sorry, 42. And then you subtract 19 to get 36, and that's how you get X is greater than 12. So her age is greater than 12. She's more than 12 years old. So let's look at this Try it. Twice the difference of Philippi's age, F, and four is at least two. What are possible values for his age? Grab the solution. So see if you can fill in the blanks by yourself. If you don't know, that's fine. Okay, Philippi's age um, F. Twice the difference of Philippi's age and four is at least two. Okay, at least means you can still be true too. That's the least number, right? So inequality wise, you're gonna multiply two. Inside the parentheses, you have F minus four. And that expression is greater than or equal to two. Using the distributed property to rewrite the inequality, 
you distribute it, you get 2f minus 2 times 4, 8 is greater than or equal to 2. Then you solve the inequality, 2f is greater than or equal to 10 when you add 10 on both, uh, 8 on both sides. If you divide 2 on both sides, you get f is greater than or equal to 5. That's your solution. And now graph the solution. This includes five, so you're gonna draw a closed circle, not an open circle. And F must be greater than, so you go to the right, okay? Convince me, describe the similarity between the process of solving an inequality with two steps and solving an inequality with more than two steps. So this involves more than two steps. What is the difference? What do you do? You might have to use the distributive property. So far, you've seen distributive properties, right? So we can write that down. We might have to use the distributive property or combine or combine um, like terms to make an equality two-step inequality and then then we can follow steps for solving a two-step okay so multi-step inequality um you want to simplify so that you get a two-step inequality and then you can simplify further. Let's look at example two. Solve more multi-step inequalities. So what if you have this? Then you have to use the distributed property and then you subtract, you combine the like terms so that you don't have to subtract twice and you get negative nine, you add nine on both sides, you get 19. But then you divide by negative three. Remember when you divide by a negative number, you have to flip the sign, okay? Always, always remember to flip the sign when you're dividing or multiplying negative numbers. And that's your solution. You can grab the solution on the number line. Negative six is included, so it's a closed circle. Your errors go to the left because X is less than. All right, example three. Solve multi-step inequalities by combining like terms. Ooh, there's a lot more here. All right. Uh, more negatives here. So look at this inequality over here. First, you can use this distributed property. And then you can use, uh, and then you can combine like terms. So 70 and 60, you can combine them by adding them. And so you get 13t. And then you add four on both sides. And negative two becomes positive two because you add four. And then you divide by 13. And that's your um that's your solution. You don't have to switch any signs because you're not dividing it by any negative number, okay? You can subtract, you can add negative numbers and that's fine, but only when you divide or multiply by negative numbers, that's when you flip the signs, okay? When all the whole inequality flip signs, that's when you flip your inequality sign as well. All right, let's uh, look at try questions. See if you can solve uh, those two inequalities by yourself and come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, solve the inequality negative one minus six times six plus two X less than 11. So use the distributive property because this is a difference. That is together and then negative one is um, by itself, right? So you're subtracting this expression from negative one, okay? So you need to do the distributive property first. So using the distributed property, you get, you multiply negative six out with six, negative six out again with positive two X, and that's less than 11, okay? Distributed property. Then you get negative one is uh, subtracted by 
36. Let's subtract it by 12x. Combine like terms, negative one plus negative 36. It's negative 37. And then you add 37 on both sides and you get 48, positive 48 here. And then you divide by negative 12, and then you flip the sign, and 48 divided by negative 12 is negative four. So that's your solution. One, two, three, four. Negative four is right here. And that's an open circle because X is greater than your arrows goes, your arrows go to the right. Your arrow goes to the right. <laughs> okay, the second inequality, you have um, two distributed properties that you need to use. And that's a lot more steps than the first one, but that's okay. You can do it, do it step by step, okay? So use, so let me write that down first. You're gonna use the distributed property here and here and get 12 minus three times six, 18 plus two is greater than or equal to negative two T plus six plus four, okay? And then combine like terms on both terms, both sides. And so 12 minus 18 plus two is negative four is greater than or equal to negative two t plus 10, yeah? And then now you, it's a, it's a two-step inequality. So now you can subtract 10 on both sides, you get negative 14 greater than or equal to negative two t. And then you divide negative t on both sides and flip the sign. Negative 14 divided by negative two is so t, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write t first, but t is greater than or equal to positive seven, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So seven is included. So you, you shade the circle and t is greater than, so you go to the right, okay? All right, do it one by one and you'll get there. So the first answer is x is greater than negative four. Second answer, t is greater than equal to seven. Check your answers and see if you have any questions, ask Ms. King or practice more problems. But we're gonna wrap our lesson. Solving multi-step inequalities is similar to solving multi-step equations. You may need to use a distributed property Combine like terms and use inverse relationships and properties to solve them. So use all that you learned to solve multi-step um, inequalities, okay? And you can graph the solution on the number line after, after you're done solving them. All right, that was lesson six seven. That was the last lesson of the topic. And um, we're going to wrap up the topic. Um, I'll see you in the next video we're gonna jump into topic seven but if you have any more questions um that's not on the video please ask miss king in class all right guys i'll see you in the next video bye